maybe that's how you played football. You know, you you were talking a lot on the field. (laughs) No, I'm. I I didn't. I know. I didn't really. I didn't say a whole lot. I think that's why I talk so much now. You know what I mean? I didn't want to like piss off John Randall or something. (laughs) No, you definitely wouldn't want to do that. Or 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 like Randall McDaniel, like Randall McDaniel, who is probably one of the best offensive guards ever played the game. He's two. He was. 280, 85 pounds, right? Wasn't that big? Mm. And didn't say boo, but it was it was like um, um the movie Blazing Saddles with yeah. Mongo. Remember Mongo? Yes, yes. You know, and he was gonna go see Mongo and he the sheriff was gonna bring his gun and he's like, Oh no, 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 don't do that. Don't shoot him, you'll just make him angry. Right? So the same it was the same thing with Randall McDaniel. It's like, dude, you do just don't talk to him, don't do, don't make him angry. Because if you make him angry, <laughs> you make him angry, you're gonna embarrass you. Were you so, playing? Were you playing when uh, with the two uh, Williams brothers, Kevin and Pat, when they were on the? I was coaching tackle? at that. Time. Oh, you were coaching. I was they, 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 coach. Those two seem very intimidating. Like you wouldn't want to mess with them either. They they were. I, I, I how do I say it? The, the, here, let me tell you a little story about Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams, we, um, uh, I was working with George O'Leary. And it was really George O'Leary who found Kevin Williams. He found him down at the Senior Bowl and, and just fell in love with the guy and. And really was the um, at the front of the, the tip of the spear in drafting him. And Kevin Williams is huge, right? He's a yeah. six five two. He's a six five three hundred pound guy, right? And he's like the smallest one in his family. Wow. His brother, his brother. We met his brother, and his brother just dwarfs him. Like he called, <laughs> like I think he, you know he refers to Kevin as little man, right? You know. Um, but Kevin's is is just a big. He's just a country guy. Right. You know, he likes to go fishing and, you know, real slow. And then there's Pat Williams. Right. And Pat Williams um, talks a million miles an hour. And a funny story about Pat Williams is is when he was young, um, you know, they thought he had a learning disability or that there was something wrong with him. And if not for a teacher, he had a a grade school teacher who realized that he had a condition where he can't he, he, he can't read. Um, like black ink on white paper. Wow. There's just something, there's just something there that, that it was like nails on a chalkboard for him visually. So she figured that out and then had all of his schoolwork printed out on red paper. Right. <laughs> and he was, and he was fine. So, wow. you know, thank God for, for those people, you know, for people in your life like that. And, but Pat talked a million miles an hour. You couldn't understand a word he was saying because he talked so fast and he had a little bit of a stutter, but he talked a million miles an hour. And he and Kevin would talk, right? You had master and blaster. You got this big guy and this little guy. Neither one of them were like little, little, but Pat would bet. And Kevin would be like, yeah, you know, that's, yeah. That's all. And, and it was, um, it was one of the funniest things. And then you had Jared Allen. I mean, their oh, meeting yeah. room, their meeting room was like, was like romper room. Right? <laughs> romper I mean, it was, room. I it was like, show. it was, oh. it was nuts. It was, it, it was, yeah, it was chaos. Speedy was wasn't alive for romper room, but that was, but, uh, that but was it was great. But when you, you know, when you coach really good players, I mean, yeah. what do you, basically I get do is get out of the way, let them go out there and do their thing. <laughs> that's right? true. Making the average ones better. better. That's yeah. that's where coaches make their hay. I guess I wouldn't want to speak to Pat Williams on the field the way he no. hit you. So no, no. Pat, Pat was <laughs> Pat was uh, he'd, he'd come running he'd come running off the field. <laughs> After a series, and he'd see guys sitting on a bench, and he'd be like, "Get, get out of the way! Get out of the way! Get out of the way!" Nose man, he's like, "Nose man, come through! Come through! Come through! Come through!" And he just coming, he's boom, right? And he would, he, yeah, you had to get out of his way when he was coming off the field of the bench. But, no, I yeah, he's, if he speaks that fast, but, I, I wouldn't but, want to hey, get involved with smart, it. Smart, smart, very, very, very smart. He's a, he knew football. He was smart about what was going on, and uh, knew what offenses were trying to do. Knew how to read blocks. Um, yeah, he's he's very very smart football player. So I want to go back to the, the current Vikings. Uh, Kevin O'Connell. When we last talked to you, we didn't know what he was as a coach yet. We were just kind of previewing that he was coming from the Rams. He was going to bring some offensive concepts. I thought he was very creative against the Patriots. They were maneuvering a lot of those guys around. So, what have you been your impressions of him so far? And how do you think they will have to be creative like that in order to attack this Jets defense? Um, yeah, Kevin. Kevin has been, um, you know. He's he's the complete opposite of Mike Zimmer in so many ways, and not that one of them's better or worse. All right, they both they're both very they're both really really good coaches, and they both won all, they won a lot of football games. I'm saying their styles can be are as, as polar opposite as you can get. Um, 
Kevin is, he's a very, he's a gifted speaker, right? He's very, very good at, at taking something that's very complex and making it very simple. Um, he's very, are very good about getting his point across. And you look at the Vikings this year compared to last year. Last year, we set a record, and I believe it was nine games that we lost by one score. You, you flip that going forward. And I don't know if there are any other, we've had all but one football game, all but one, eight of our nine wins all been by one score. <laughs> and so what exactly is that? Is that the coach and the scheme and everything? Well, you know, we'll get into that, but it's, these guys believe in themselves now and they believe in each other more importantly. And so that, and that can't be, you can't just sit people in a room and tell them, right. You, you know, you never give up, you never surrender. You got faith in, in the guy next to you. You're in that foxhole together that that stuff can't be taught it can't be uh you know commanded it's something that has to happen almost organically uh but yeah they found a way they found a way to win these football games and what he's doing is and I'm this is why I'm so excited to see what cousins is able to do um and I you know I heard what I I heard what you said about cousins earlier and it's like okay I mean I, I get where that comes from and I think they're I, I can see the point but they're putting so much – he's putting – Kevin O'Connell's putting so much more on Kirk Cousins as a football player, knowing the game plan, knowing what he's going to see, having the responsibility of putting the team in the right position. So it's nowhere near as simple as it used to be for him because for Cousins, it used to be just line up and execute the play that's called. Now he has say in things. Now he has to make decisions. Now he has to really know what's going on out there. Uh, and I think against the Patriots was the best example of this offense working like that. We've we've seen fits and spurts of it. Um, you know, uh, it, you know, you've seen mistakes, you know, some growing pains, those kinds of things. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes against the Jets and for the next, you know, five weeks or so after that, uh, because if this starts clicking for him, right, if this if this starts clicking for Cousins and the offense and everybody else. I think, you know, offensively, we can hang with anybody, um, you know, and defensively, yeah, they're learning a three, four, a lot of new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they got to get more physical. Our defense needs to be, you know, they need to be more physical and learning the techniques and playing them right, especially in a three, four, which is new to a lot of them. They can master that. You know, I think the defense can improve quite a bit. You know, we have some issues at corner with just bodies. Andrew Booth Jr., our rookie corner just had knee surgery so he's out Cameron Dantzler um has had neck issues and so we've had another rookie of Caleb Evans in there uh Duke Shelley who you know was um I think with the Bears mm -hmm. I don't even know I mean he was I think he, he was with the, Bears. the practice yeah. squad yeah and so you know he made a, actually made a big play against the Bills for us and uh, made a big play last week uh one big one nice play big play against the, the Patriots so you know, how far, how far realistically you sit there and go, well, you know, how far can a team go with a, you know, with a rookie corner? It's like, well, just whatever. Uh, overall though, um, this offense, I think is starting to click and it's, it, it, like I said, I hope it's not the roller coaster ride that we've kind of seen over the last couple months, but we'll, you know, we'll, I, we'll see. We are talking to former Vikings linebacker and current Vikings radio network analyst, Pete Bursick, you were speaking about the corner situation uh, for the Vikings. The Jets have uh, uh, a lot of prolific offensive talent. Uh, you have Garrett Wilson, who's becoming a star right in front of her eyes. Yep. Even with Zach Wilson throwing him, throwing to him, uh, he's been putting up the numbers. Now you have White, two touchdowns, 95 yards last week. It was fantastic. You have Elijah Moore now waking up. You have the tight ends. You know Conklin very, very well. He's finally... Yep. Uh, figuring out how to catch the ball with the Jets. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, uh, you have Davis back. You have Denzel Mims becoming a piece and, and a piece of the pie for the New York Jets. And then uh, really just the speed of this team. This is going to be a very hard offense for the Vikings to stop, being that they have so many weapons. And it's crazy to say this because you know this, Pete. When was the last time you could say that the Jets have weapons? I don't even remember um, the last time. 
You know? Yeah, man, I don't know. I mean, Brian, back in the Brian Cox days, <laughs> right? I you mean, know what I mean? They had Brendan Marshall and Eric Decker for one year, and then that that went to yeah. you know to split. Yeah, that but, went south. Yes. Um, yeah. It's, no, it's been, it's been a while. It's mm-hmm. been a while, and and trust me, when you turn on the you you, you turn on the tape and you watch the film, um, like I said, this is by far the fastest defense, and I'm talking, you know, from the nose tackle to the to the to the nickel to the free safety to the dime everybody that they put on the field is an unbelievable athlete and they can run um so you're not going to be able to run away from these guys you're not gonna be able to just run outside and 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 run away from them um what defense guy really scares you in the film that you've watched quinn and williams we hear a lot about when i take i took a good look at the bears game and it was really it was it was john franklin myers that guy um wow he's just he's you know he's good you guys kind of you guys kind of play the run on the way to the quarterback, right? You're you you know the defense is is upfield yep. and, and and they're very very aggressive. So, but those I think those two guys up front, um, a good defensive front. You got you, I mean really across the board, um, you know Nathan Shepard. They're 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 all very very good good football players. They're in a system that fits them. The movement and the line stunts and the blitzing and all those things that they do so well together. Um, if you're, if you don't have your footwork down or your technique down and your offensive line doesn't know how to pass off stunts and do some of those things, they could, it could really be a long day because those guys are just such unbelievable athletes. Pete, you know, what stands out to me when I watch this jets defense is the linebacker play. Everybody thought that this linebacker linebacker play going into the season had no depth. Mosley, obviously, over the last couple of years, has been fighting injury. This has been the first mm-hmm. year where he stayed. He's really been healthy all season long, has been a huge leader for this team. Kawan mm-hmm. Alexander, yeah. they bring him in. And then Quincy Williams, where they practically stole him from the Jaguars. And I'm sure they're yeah. smacking themselves in the head how fast he is, uh, the yep. ability that he has you know, in the open field to tackle tight ends and do the things that the Jets have not been good at for years. And that's why the Patriots have been demolishing them. Uh, I don't even <laughs> want to mention that name, but that, that team. 